Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create and manipulate a terrain model using Sub-D tools in Rhino 7. To begin with, I've created this 100 by 100 meter square which I'm going to be using as reference for my terrain model I'm going to make. We're going to start by going to the Sub-D tools menu at the top here and locating the Sub-D plane on the left hand side here. We're going to create this plane slightly larger than my reference square, like so as this has rounded edges when we make it and we want to have a little bit extra that we can then trim off when creating our landscape. Once we've made our sub-D plane we're going to select that plane and then locate the subdivide option here. Now if we select the subdivide sub-D option it's going to split the plane into more subdivisions here and we're going to do this a few times to create a few subdivisions within our plane like so. The more subdivisions you have, the more accurate you'll be able to sculpt your terrain, but the longer it may take to do so and the more power it will take on your computer. So you want to find a nice balance between the two. And I think around this number of subdivisions is good for this particular example. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start to reform and transform this terrain using the vertex points located on this surface. To do that, I'm going to select the plane and turn on the control points, which are found on the left hand side here. If we left click this option, we'll then have a small point located at each of the vertices on this plane. If I select one of these points with the gumball turned on down here, you can then see we can start to push and pull these points upwards, transforming and sculpting our terrain like so. Now, currently, we can only do this point by point we can push and pull each of these points but can't make any larger moves on the surface. To do this we're going to actually turn on something called soft transform and this is found up on the left hand side here. Now if I select the soft transform tool we can see we have this radius option and this enable option. So first we're going to enable the tool by selecting enable to yes and then we're going to go to the radius option and this value here is linked to the units you're using. So I'm using meters. So we're going to put the radius on 50 meters to start with. Hit the enter key and then hit enter again to exit the tool. Once we've done that, if we then select a point to transform again and start to push and pull this point, you'll see that instead of just moving that single point, it's now moving the point with that radius attached. So all the points within a 50 meter radius of this point are now being transformed in this way. So it allows us to start to sculpt the terrain on a much larger area than we were first able to do so. We can push this up, we can pull this down, and we can really start to kind of move and shape the terrain depending on whatever profile we want to try and create. It may be that you bring in an elevation that you want to match or you just do this by eye. And how I usually like to do this is start with the larger moves where we're just moving large portions of the terrain around until we get the right balance that we're looking for within our model. And once we're happy with the larger moves, we can then start to add in more detail. So once we've done our sort of larger portions like so, you can then go back to the soft selection tool we can lower this radius down, so we'll put this on a 20 now. And then if we exit the tool again and select a point, we can start to add in little bits of detail using that smaller radius. And I'd recommend just kind of going in with the smaller radius to kind of move and shape any pieces around. It may be that you want to move multiple points simultaneously, in which case we can select a few points at the same time to move to create a ridge or a seam in our model like so. It may be that you want to kind of cut a path through the middle so we could always move a few points in that way and pull them all down simultaneously. So it's really up to you how you use this tool and I definitely recommend having a play around with it until you get the right form of geometry you want to use. Now I think I'm happy with my geometry here so what we're going to be doing now is turning this back into a surface that we can transform into a 3D poly surface model that we can then use boolean tools on and start to create into our 2D drawings or 3D models that we want to use in the rest of our Rhino file. Sub D objects are sort of quite unique objects in Rhino and they're slightly harder to work with so it's always good to convert them back into editable geometry that we can then use our standard sort of tools found in the standard menu here on from that point. 
Now to convert this back into editable geometry, we're going to be using the contour model to first slice this terrain up into a series of contour lines. To do this, I'm going to first turn off the points on my surface, and we can do that by going back to our points and right clicking on this tool to turn those off. Now to create our contour lines from our sub D surface, we're just going to select the sub D surface like so and type in contour on the command bar up here. Now at times I've had problems using the contour command directly with a sub D surface and it can cause Rhino to crash. If you do have problems with this, what you can do is instead of using it directly on the sub D surface like so, we can first select this surface and click this extract mesh option, which will extract a mesh from that surface. Then we can just select that mesh here instead of the sub D and you'll see it says one open mesh added to selection in this place and use the contour commands on that mesh like so. So if we hit contour, it asks us for a base point and to pick that, I'm just gonna go to the front view and choose the lowest point in the model, which is around here. It doesn't usually have to be exact for this. And then it will ask for a point perpendicular to the direction of the contours. Now, I want my contours to be cut horizontally across my surface. So in the front view, I'm just gonna hold the shift key and lock that line vertically upwards and then click any point above my point there. And that will mean my contours will slice horizontally but move vertically up the model. Then it asks for a distance between the contour planes. And for this, we're gonna be having a one meter distance between each of the contours. So I'm gonna use one for that distance. And once you've set that, you can just hit the enter command and it will cut your contours for you like so. And there we've got a contour model of our terrain. Now, once we have that, I'm gonna select both the mesh and the sub D. And I'm just gonna move them across like so here. Then with our contours, we're just going to select all of the contours. I'm going to deselect my square below and I'm going to use the patch command just by typing in patch in the command line. With a U and a V span, I'm using 40 by 40 here, but depending on the accuracy and the sort of quality of the model you want to get out, the higher that value, the more accurate or the higher the fidelity of that terrain will be. Um, do bear in mind that the higher that value, the longer it will take to generate and the harder it will be to work with because it will take up more memory on your PC. So 40 by 40 will work for this case and I'm just going to hit enter to load that up. And there you can see we've now generated a surface from our contours. And what we can do now is we can move the contours across, we don't need those anymore. Now to tidy up this surface, what I'll usually do is just take my square that I was first using to draw out the kind of def definitions of the boundaries of this terrain and I'm just going to extrude this upwards just by going extrude curve and just pull it upwards like so and then I'm going to move that box right directly through the model so it completely clips through the model there. Then with that box selected I'm just going to go to the trim Tool here and just trim off the outside edge by selecting that and it will use the blocks to trim that surrounding edge of the model. I can then delete my box from there and there we have our kind of terrain model. From here you might also want to select the terrain and extrude this surface instead of the outline. So if you click on extrude surface we can extrude it downwards to make it into a solid model. I can delete my main surface from there and what I might also do in that case is just build another box below and then just use the boolean difference function found here to select the first element, hit enter, select the second and it will just delete that box from there trimming off the bottom and I can delete that extra piece and there we're left with a nice kind of clean terrain slab of our model. From here you might want to then cut a path into the terrain or use the boolean tools to excavate out areas of the terrain model as well. But we now have a kind of closed poly surface, a nice clean piece of geometry that we can then start to work with in our 3D model and build into either a terrain model to render or a kind of 2D line drawing to work with from there. So that was just a quick video tutorial on how to create a editable terrain model using sub D tools in Rhino 7. I hope you found this video useful and if you want to watch any other videos on terrain creation, drawing production or rendering in Rhino, please check out the videos on the channel.